This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, as most of you are aware, Pega 24.2 version is in the market and everybody is trying to explore this Gen AI features, this constellation and various other things that came up in you know 24 version they are trying to explore and even most of the interviewers are asking you if you have any idea about this gen AI features like blueprint uh, you know coach connect you know constellation xyz things that came up they are all asking in the interviews if you have any idea about them so i thought i'll make videos on each of these features so that it helps you know people who are trying to explore this now in this video i'm going to cover just only about pega blueprint which is pretty easy so let's quickly jump into that. See, what is this Pega Gen AI Blueprint? It's basically a tool, okay? It's a tool that uses Gen AI. Okay, what does it do? It generates a blueprint of the application. So what do you mean by a blueprint of the application? See, generally, uh, you know, whenever you're building any brand new project in Pega, what do we do? We first give it to the LSAs, Lead System Architects, okay? These people are going to build the, the base of the application. What do you mean by base? Building the various case types in the project, the stages, the basic flows, the bare minimum data model required for supporting the application, the all the different types of integrations that we need, and uh, the you know bare minimum uh, screens, the properties, the personas, operators, access privileges, and all this the basic structure, the skeleton we build. Okay, that is basically called as a blueprint of the application. So now generally in older versions what we used to do is this LSAs used to sit they used to discuss with the uh, you know line of business or the business analyst you know understand the requirements and they used to set up calls understand all the end-to-end -end things and they used to build all these things so which was quite an effort it could be like 50 to 60 hours or sometimes more effort okay depending upon the size of the project the effort lies because you need to identify all these things and build it from the scratch what all case types, stages, basic workflows, data models, personas, you know, basic properties, basic UI, and all these things we need to build. And once you bring a structure, then we give it to the development team so that they start enhancing the application sprint by sprint. Okay, so this initial LSA part, you know what they, they are doing. This became easy with this Gen AI Blueprint in Pega 24.2. So how it became easy, we'll see. How it has made things easy for the LSS, we'll see. So if you actually go to just Google Pega Gen AI Blueprint, build Pega Gen AI Blueprint, okay, you will come to the screen. Okay, you can build a blueprint of the application by selecting the industry, the division, subdivisions and all, you can build. Okay, why can't I build it in my own, you know, Pega instance? See, if you open your Pega instance and you try to build a new application, it will actually give you two options. Mm. I'm just trying to click. Yeah, it will give you options like this. Do you want to create a new blueprint of your own from the scratch so that others can reuse it? Or do you want to, you know, uh, this one so do you will do uh, you already have a blueprint which you took it from someone or you prepared on your own and downloaded it from the pegas official website so you can upload it and build your application or you can build your own customized blueprint which others can use later or the regular way the old way of building build from the scratch you build your organization layer division layer framework layers implementation layers then you jump into the app studio build your case types you do all everything manually like we were doing in pega 8.x right this is the manual way or you want this to be like a built-on application built on base of some other application you can use this so this is something new which didn't exist earlier okay so now how do you build a blueprint so you come here okay you select the entry it's more like you know uh, buying a pegas framework just just a glimpse i'm telling you like you know you select the industry you select the subtype they will give you the entire thing like you know the workflows the case types the stages the data models uh, the personas everything the integrations they are giving you everything Okay, so LSA work became so easy with this option now. So you can take any option, okay, depending upon the industry, you can pick any option. I'm just picking insurance. 
Now they ask you the subdivision. Okay, if you find anything here, select it, or you can select other and you can give your own subdivision, whatever it is. Let's say I'm going for life insurance. You can even put any supporting documents if you want to put. Okay, this is a description. Like you can select what is the purpose of this application. You have taken insurance, right? So is it billing, customer service, policy cancellation, the various types they think it will be, they have given. So you can select or you can give your own application purpose and you can give your functional descriptions and all. Okay. So I took policy inquiry and you got some description. You can edit it if you want. You can give on your own whatever you want to give. You can give based on that the application will be generated. So I click on the next. And do you see here? This is the most important thing, which is making your work easy. Look at this. These are the various case types they think this particular industry would have under this particular no, uh, thing that you have selected. Look at this. Now, if you want to generate more case types, you can click on generate more. Or if you think, hey, this case type doesn't make any sense. I don't need this. You can delete. Or if you think, yeah, this is what I need, but I want to make slight changes to this. You can just open and you can you know, change the description and you can just regenerate the life cycle by giving more details here. Okay. So case types they are able to decide. That is one good thing. Now. Let's move ahead and see what all they can do for us. Now, case life cycle. What about the various stages involved? That's also important, right? So you can edit each case type like this by selecting. You can select. And you can update the life cycle okay you can either add more steps or you can delete a step you can change So in this particular screen, you can even decide what's your primary stage, what's your alternate stage. You know, you can add your own stages, you can add your own steps. Okay, you can do all those things. You can even move it up and down, whatever you want, you can do. Okay, so for every single case type, you can do that. Now, you also see this, you can edit the case type. Okay, and here comes your data model. Okay, here you can see this is the various data types they are creating, nothing but the data tables to store your content and all. Okay, and the properties and all they are creating here okay basically properties are getting created here okay so you can see the various important properties that are required for processing your case they are creating here so if you want to edit it the same thing okay so this is properties guys not data tables sorry this is properties getting created here okay now if you want to generate more they can do if you want to add your own fields you can do Move ahead. Okay, this is the screen for data objects. Okay, last screen is for properties and this is for data types. Okay, you can see 
the various data types, data tables that are required are getting created here. So if you want to add new data types, you can add. If you want to edit the existing ones, you can edit. You can change the database also. And uh, you can you cut the data model like this. Okay, these are the various fields coming under each data model. So you can just edit, add more, delete, whatever you want, you can do here. So basically, what did you see? They are creating case types, stages, flows, uh, uh, properties, data types. So far, this got created, right? Now, click on the next. Personas, okay? Personas are getting created. Same, edit them, delete them, generate more. You can do it in every single screen. And finally, this is the final screen. Okay, you can download a blueprint of what you have created. And now you can import this into your application. Now, this blueprint is something you can share. Okay, you can download and share with any number of people. So, this is useful only for Pega projects which are brand new. Right? So somebody is building a brand new project. They want to save some time, money and effort. They can go and use this blueprint. And they can quickly build the application. So, once it is downloaded you can just come and you can take it build from a blueprint is it downloaded let me pause my screen and pick my downloads So it is downloaded. I kept it on my desktop. So you can just select this and upload a blueprint. You have already downloaded it, right? So same thing I'm going to upload. See, it comes with a pref uh, sorry, that extension as blueprint, dot blueprint. Okay, you can just upload it. Okay, once it's uploaded, everything that you have generated there will be created here. So whatever you saw there, theoretically on the paper, now they'll be actually created here. So this is being built with constellation, you can see here. And what's your application name? You can give any name of your choice. Edit it as per your choice. And oh, even this one, you can even take it like a PDF. If you want to share it with your client and have a demo and all, you can do that. You can even download it as a PDF. And look at this, the case types that you have selected are getting created. So if you have any plans to get rid of anything, you can get rid of them from here. Like do not build. I don't want this one. Let's say I don't want this one. You can just say do not build. Okay. And you can move forward. Same way, whatever you don't like, you can just say do not build. Let's say these are the you know data types that are getting created. Let's say I don't want this. Okay. I don't want this. You can just say no, I don't want this many are getting created. Just I'm showing you what you can do. Then, personas. Whatever you want, you can keep, and the rest you can say do not build. Okay, and finally, you know, that we do generally in Pega8.x when you build an application, giving your enterprise class structure, organization, division, framework, and implementation names. You do here, whatever is your org name. Let's say I'm giving my organization name as HDFC division. Let's say it's an insurance division. Okay, so you can just give whatever is your application name. So this is the work classes that are getting created, data classes that are getting created. You can see all of them here and say submit. Let's wait for it to complete. 
So this is actually a time saver for brand new applications. So if your application is already in older versions of Pega and you're upgrading, this is of no use to you because you already have your case types, data objects, properties, personas, integrations, everything you already have, right? So this is of no use to an existing Pega application, but for brand new application, it's going to be a time saver. Let it build. We'll just look at the things that got created. You can look at the rules increasing here. I'll pause my recording, let the rule building complete. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, here you go. It's done, 100% done. And this is the screen I got. Okay, they have created one user. Okay, with this name. And if you want, you can build more users. I'll just give something like this. Okay, so they have built the application. Now, let, let me go back and uh, try to log off and use it again. Oh shit, I didn't give my password. One minute. save my password actually I have done all this in the bigger trials okay you can see the new application that I have imported using a blueprint is ready and it is here Okay, let's see whether all those case types which we imported are here or not. Okay, here are the case types. Okay. Okay, now how about those data objects? Everything will be created, the case types, the data objects, the properties, the personas, everything will be created. You can see all of them are created. So like this, you know, everything will be automatically created when you just import the blueprint. So it makes things uh, pretty easy for you. Okay, so that's the reason, you know, we prefer to go with the blueprint. The initial time that is taken to build this application is cut down to a great extent because you find templates it's just like you know uh, you're trying to make a powerpoint presentation and how, how do you feel if you have a template which are very relevant to your requirement the same way it is we have a lot of templates available so if you make use of them you know it makes your work easy okay so you can even check your data model here the properties and all Okay, I hope this video is useful. So in my upcoming videos, I'm planning to do more about this Pega 24 features so that it can help you, uh, you know, in exploring these things. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.